What's up guys, this is Erkin from HDD Recovery Services. Today I got three relatively moderate, moderate complexity cases. Case number one is a Samsung hard drive that will um, require a platter swap because the motor is not working. The motor is not spinning up. Even if we just connect the PCB uh, without having the heads attached to the drive uh, and power it on, the drive doesn't even spin. I've tested the same thing with the donor that I'm gonna use, which is this drive here, and it actually spins up. Right now, there, it, it's, it doesn't even have a head assembly inside, and if I was to put a power supply to this, the drive would start spinning up. This drive, however, does not spin up, and I've tested it uh, through several things, including the board swap, which was the easiest to tackle. Uh, but one way to f kind of simulate the problem, I put an isolator to the head assembly and I powered on the drive so that it would feed the power to the motor and it's not doing that. So I would assume that uh, if it's not rotating, uh, the problem uh, is not on the ROM level or PCB firmware corruption level because I took this board off of the fail drive and I put it on the donor and the donor rotates. So it's simply something within the motor and we'll have to deal with it. Now the tools that I'm gonna use for this is this good old uh, HDD surgery um, F1, F2, F3, two to three platter head, is head extraction tool and this good old roll of tape. I'll explain the tape situation later and why I need it. Uh, the next uh, drive, it's not a very difficult process to perform a head replacement on the Western Digital, especially on the modern ones, but um, the uh, complexity uh, slightly increases because this drive uh, potentially has platter damage. Um, we will have to pull the head assembly out, inspect the condition of heads um, as they sit currently in the drive, original heads that is, and based on that, we'll have to make an assumption of which heads will have to be cut out from the donor head assembly. And we'll uh, also reprogram the RAM of the drive once it powers on so that the drive can run without that head adequately and at least give us partial information off of it. This unit is not from a MyBook, it's from a network uh, drive, which uh, is probably gonna have some sort of uh, Linux partition on it but it's not encrypted, which is a good thing because if it was encrypted, partial recovery sometimes would um, be a problem. Uh, and for this unit, the head extraction kit for Western Digital 3.5 inch does just fine. Last but not least for today, it's uh, Seagate 7200.12. These drives, everybody who does this for a living knows these drives pretty well and they, everybody knows that these drives are really horrible for uh, taking new parts. Uh, sometimes they do require uh, further adaptation of head assembly for adaptive data to be migrated from uh, the um, donor hard drive in, and uh, some portions of the ROM in the source drive need to be modified in order to adapt those parts a little better and for that I'm gonna use the regular uh, 7200.11 and 12 uh, for platter kit. Uh, this drive is clicking but it's not clicking like heads are completely dead. It, click, it clicks constantly and even every now and then it makes a sound like it's just gonna catch it and it's just gonna run but it doesn't. So I'm guessing the heads just started to fail recently and maybe it's not even related to all of them so through firmware we may even try to disable uh, heads starting from the top and going towards the bottom because the first heads are the ones that are reading service area and first heads are the ones that are initializing initializing this drive uh, so by disabling them from the top we may actually isolate it to a specific and again perform partial recovery potentially in as-is condition, but since this is a Seagate, I'm, there is always a risk of platter damage potentially happening from just having this drive run on its own heads right now. So I'm gonna carefully inspect everything and figure out 
what the appropriate action would be. Uh, this is kind of like a, a moment where I really want to give a plug out to these guys, HDD Surgery. They make amazing tools for uh, uh, hard drive uh, head extraction and some other things as well that you might find useful. So if you guys are interested in their tools, you can check them out in the description box. I'll post a link. They're not cheap tools, but uh, what tools are cheap in data recovery? I don't know of any and um, simply because this stuff really does work. The stuff you see on eBay that's made out of plastic, I personally don't have experience with it, uh, but I would say that it's, it, it's all in the precision and you cannot get the precision that these guys are getting using a 3D printer. I just don't buy that. So um, watch me work these three drives. I'm gonna set my uh, expectation bar <laughs> a little lower today because these are th these are not regular cases that I deal with uh, in mu on multiple occasions during the day. These are pretty um, I wouldn't call them hardcore, but they're pretty tough cases. Platter swap, um, platter damage, and 7200.12. These are the drives, these are the, this is the kind of work that may take me a little while to do. So that's why I'm only doing three and I need to stop talking because it's been going on for very too long. Watch the show guys. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. Um, if you need data recovery services, there's also a link to our site where you can request that stuff or, or, or even call us. Um, that's, uh, that's it pretty much. I'm just gonna get set up on my bench and get to work. On the left, I have uh, the patient's drive that's not working. On the right, I have a donor drive that is working.
I underestimated uh, how many hours there are in a day and um, this RAID 5 case that I'm working on currently completely threw me off the track. Uh, all of my channels on all PC 3000s had to be basically taken up because I image from channel to channel so each station can only do two cases at the same time. So for the entirety of one terabyte imaging process um, my PC 3000 stations were not available. In the meantime, I was only able to get one thing done out of the three that I wanted to do, but I promise you guys that the uh, second one and the third one will come up tomorrow because I don't have any imaging planned for tomorrow, up until now at least. Uh, that being said, uh, good turnout on that Samsung drive. Platter swap went great, drive is reading. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get a lot of data recovered from that unit, if not everything. Um, on the up note, all of the images for the RAID 5s are made now, configuration is found, I just have to stitch and copy the information out. Thank you for watching this episode, I'll see you guys next time, hit like and subscribe if you haven't already. See ya!